Hello, I'm Daniel Weiss of Weiss Engineering, and today I tell you about our newly introduced D2A converters, the DAC204 and the DAC205. These I call the plain vanilla converters, but still they are of very high quality. The difference between the two is that the DAC204 also incorporates a USB interface, while the DAC205 just has SPDIF inputs. The D2A converter part is the same in both units, though. Let me tell you first about the USB interface. For that, we use our INT204 interface, basically. That's another unit we sell separately. And this here is the board we use in this INT204. It has a USB input with the receiving chip here, then an FPGA chip, which is a programmable chip for signal processing. This chip does DSD to PCM conversion and also PCM to PCM conversion, plus the formatting of the output signals for ASCBO and SPDIF. In addition, it has a sampling frequency display, the green LEDs here. These are only active with the USB input and not with the other inputs. Then, as I told you, it does DST conversion. That means you can feed it with DST64 or DST128 signals and have those converted to analog. Uh, the PCM input can go up to 384 kilohertz. Uh, these high frequencies are converted down by a factor of 2 to 192 or 176.4 kilohertz. So the outputs here, which are on XLR, RCA and, and BNC, these outputs are always at the 192 maximum. So the nice thing having such an interface built in, which is fully independent of the D2A converter part, is that you can insert a digital unit externally in the signal path. <clears throat> so you can go, for instance, from the output from the INT204 interface to an external equalizer, and the output of the EQ goes back into the D2A converter via the RCA input, for instance. So you can have a, a signal chain which includes a room equalizers, equalizer, for instance. Then we have a look at the back panel here. We have on top the analog outputs on RCA and XLR. Then there are two switches which allow to attenuate the signal by 10 dB steps. So we have four different levels which can be set to accommodate for the amplifier you have connected. Then there are two inputs, the RCA and the Toslink optical. And at the bottom here in the DAC204 case, we have the, the connectors for this INT204 interface, as mentioned. Plus, there is a power supply input. We have an external power supply, wall-type power supply, which is supplied with the unit when we sell it. Optionally, we have a standalone analog low-noise power supply available. That's the PSU-102, which can be used for these converters. Then often we get the question, what about headphones? Because we don't have any headphone sockets here. For those people, we have made our adapter cables, like this one, which goes from the RCA outputs to a jack-type headphone. And Another one is the balanced headphone type, which goes from the XLR outputs to a four-pin XLR standardized balanced headphone type. On the front panel, we have the power on switch plus the source selection switch. So it's a very simple setup. There isn't any remote control no web interface or whatever. 
So it's just plain operation via the front panel controls. So it's very simple to operate. Okay, that's about it, about those two units. If you are inclined to buy one, then I suggest you contact your dealer. And thank you for listening and watching.